Hello students, this is a game called Stop Disasters. It's at stopdisastersgame.org forward slash stop underscore disasters. It's a game designed by the um, United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, which is trying to help communities around the world reduce the harm that is caused by natural disasters um, through planning and um, community education and um, building in different ways and in different places. Um, they're trying to make the world safer from disasters. So it's our job to play the flood version of this game. Since we just got done learning about floods, you have to scroll down. Don't end up playing tsunami or earthquake. You want to go to uh, Eastern Central Europe, and I would choose easy. It's pretty tough if you start out any higher. And so here we have um, a young man who's telling us this is a city in Central Europe located near a mountainous region that is prone to occasional flooding. The city has a population of 446 people whose livelihoods are mainly in service industries and energy production. You have to protect as many people, buildings, and livelihoods as you can against a possible flood. Your challenge is to provide accommodation to 550 people, build one hospital, one school, and cover all of the wells. Think about what you can do to protect people and their property against flooding. You have a choice of different housing and upgrades and defenses are also available. Choose the best option and save as many people as you can. So we can look at um, these different plots um, and we can see how much risk from flooding. So these plots closest to the river are most uh, highest risk for flooding. As you go back, um, you can uh, you get less and less risk. So for example, up here, this is um, a grass plot you can build on it. Um, let's build a brick house here. And you can see that as we build, we use up our $50,000. You can also demolition houses that are in high risk areas. You can click on this red X. And you can find out, is this a historic hotel or is it okay? They provide accommodation for a large number of people and an increased community wealth. But this hotel is at high risk of flooding. We could choose to just upgrade it here. We can protect it, we can raise it a little bit, protect against sewer backflow, put some waterproof sealant on it, and that helps protect it. It may not be enough, but um, we're playing the game here. Um, every community that has a flood risk kind of plays this game for real. And they don't always have all of the information either. They don't know exactly what years are going to flood, how much it's going to flood. Um, and so they're basically racing the clock sometimes to do what they need to do to protect their communities. One thing that's part of our mission is to seek out those wells and we can upgrade them by covering them. That keeps floodwaters from getting in the drinking water and contaminating it. Because once you get flood water in your drinking water, uh, it's hard to undo that. So you can look for all of the wells, kind of zoom around. Here's another one. Upgrade it. Another part of our mission is to build a school and a hospital. So we have to look around this community and see where a good place might be to build a school or a hospital. High ground looks good to me, so we can scroll down here and build a hospital right here. Then once we build our hospital, we wanna do as much as we can to um, keep it safe. So we can give everyone a one week course on disasters and we can reinforce the building. Cause this is an important community resource. Um, we're getting some hints here. Buildings need to be situated and built considering the landscape or river flooding characteristics. Those located further from dangerous water conditions and on higher ground stand a better chance of survival during floods. Economic factors, however, can drive people to place buildings too close to water hazards. 
you can use the risk map to identify areas most prone to flooding and danger. That's why we put the hospital on high ground. Um, we uh, also already protected our wells because floods almost often carry toxic materials, raw sewage, animal waste, and chemicals. Well, flooding is common uh, when possible in a way and build with materials that can avoid or withstand damaging forces of floodwaters. So not probably a wood hut, maybe cement, maybe brick. If possible, avoid building on floodplains. Um, we can use the flood risk map to do that. We can locate people's homes, schools, and important public buildings above flood bills. We better, we better go build our school here. Schools and hospitals can be excellent meeting and shelter places in addition to providing important education and medical help, as everyone in the community will know how to get the, to these buildings quickly. They should always be constructed in safe areas and be protected as much as possible. Basements and underground buildings are especially prone to flooding. Important or expensive appliances, heating, and electrical systems should be located above likely flood levels. Um, flooding can also cause sewage to enter houses through drain pipes, creating additional health habits. Inserting sewage backflow valves can help minimize this risk. So we've read a lot of the key facts. Um, we were reminded that we need a school and we better protect it. So let's go find a good place to build a school. Maybe we want to build it on grass. That looks kind of muddy. Not too close to the river. Let's go up here. So if we go down, we can build a school. And then once we build our school, we can upgrade our school with some Stop Disasters curriculum, a two-week course for all the students to help um, help the community understand flooding, and we can build reinforcements on the building. We still have a lot of budget left, so we can um, build some more housing on high ground. But before we do that, um, let's upgrade our community center with um, we can get evacuation signs around the community center to get people to higher ground. We can get training for um, community leaders. We can get a local alarm system to let people know that the floods are coming and a radio system to let people around the outside the community know that they should go to higher ground. So a little bit of money spent there on some warnings. I, wa I wonder if we can fortify this building. Nope. Okay, probably already is. So let's build some houses. Let's spend some money here. Kind of, you can look at kind of what's the best value. This is how many people live there, and this is how much it costs. Um, hotels are great for housing people. Um, and so we want to put those on high ground, and we want to upgrade those to make sure they're really safe. I'm gonna build a house here. I'll protect the house. You can see that my time is starting to run out here. You get more time on the easy level and less time on the more difficult levels. I still have $40,000 here to spend. So I'm, I better spend it quick here. Um, these houses are in risk level four. Maybe if I just protect them, I won't have to demolition them. Um, I'm gonna demolition this house because it's too close to the river. Same with this one. And then we'll build better houses for these folks. Uh, oops, that's a little bit close to the river. Maybe not such a great choice, but we'll give it. The river probably doesn't flood as much right here. Okay, I'll build. Maybe I'll build a church here. That's great for holding a lot of people. 
Churches are strong buildings that can provide a safe place for a lot of people in the surrounding area. And you can see all these little people, they're gonna, they'll um, go to a building in a flood if they, can, if they can, if there's one nearby. And so we wanna protect those people. Oh, I better cap that well. Okay, let's build some more houses so people have a place to live. Now everyone required has been housed. Well done. So I built enough housing. Um, you might want to build some more defenses. Would you like to trigger the disaster now with the present level of protection? Maybe not. So I can build some levees. Oh, I can't upgrade that. I can build some defenses here. I can put in an earth levee here. I can't put one, that probably wasn't a smart choice on my part, because I can't put a levee here, so water's just gonna flood in there. That maybe wasn't a great idea. Maybe putting some levees in here, though, will protect, oops. Well, they're kind of facing the wrong way, but hopefully they count as the other way. Maybe I'll build a rock dike here. So we have lots of money left. Um, I could upgrade a lot of these houses that already exist. That's cheaper than building new houses especially the ones that have a lot of, like, hotels that can house a lot of people. I have money, but I'm running out of time. You can tell here that um, I'm, it's going to flood soon, so I better... Oh, I already did that. Let me fix that. Oh, our helper here is giving us another hint. Evacuation plans are crucial to saving lives. They can be as simple as knowing the quickest way to evacuate, going to higher ground, or as elaborate as community exercise drills organized by local leaders or government officials. As you install an early warning system, an evacuation will now be possible once an early warning and official instructions are given. All right, let's protect that. Yes, we did. I try to protect as many resources as I can before it floods. If I want to just see how well I'm doing, I can put start disaster. So here's my early warning system at work. It's telling everyone the flood's gonna come and they should get ready to evacuate. And this gets people, hopefully these people will go to a building here um, because now they're hearing sirens or they're getting text alerts or maybe they're hearing it on a radio that they should um, take cover. Okay, there we go. So we're flooding. I didn't spend all my money, so next time I play, I know I can spend more money. I could probably put up more defenses. I sheltered enough people. 
let's see my report here and see how well I did. This is what you want to turn in here. So I passed my mission. I built a school. I built a hospital. I protected it. Um, I still destroyed 21 buildings. Um, 42 people died. Apparently I didn't have enough early warning system or I didn't move enough people to higher ground. I did protect my wells and I had a lot of budget remaining. So um, your assignment here is to take a picture of this particular page and hand this in. This is your um, this is your grade here. You get um, graded on how many buildings were destroyed, how many people you sheltered, um, hopefully you saved a lot of people from dying, um, your total damages are low, and you passed all of your missions. Ideally you'd spend all of your budget and maybe you want to build more defenses or protect more houses. So that's how to play the game. Um, like a lot of communities, you can learn from your mistakes. Um, if you didn't pass or you didn't save everyone, you had a lot of buildings destroyed, play again. Um, to get all the points, you need a score of 50,000. So I'd have to play again if I wanted all of the points for this assignment. Thanks so much for watching. This is Dr. B signing off.